Why did you decide to tackle this subject? You know, in 2013, when it was revealed in June, it was explosive material. It made a lot of headlines. And people, I really feel, and I think this is going to surprise you, I don't think they really understood what was revealed because it's techn technical and it's complicated. And, it's all, and a lot of it is beneath the surface. So I didn't understand all of it. So I got to know Snowden after that. And I went back three, four times to Moscow and then eventually nine times. But I, as we talked, uh, I, I understood so much more. And it was, I felt it was an obligation to make a movie which it could explain what happened because it, it eluded us. You know, the, in, in a case like this with so much heightened hype and stuff like that, the, the attention turns to the messenger and not the message because the message is complicated. Mm -hmm. So he's a traitor, he's this, he's that. All these accusations are simplifying it. And I got to know him and I got, so I decided to tell the movie through his eyes, mm -hmm. uh, his point of view, and show him as a young man, nine years of his life, as he step by step as he understands the picture, the big picture. Let's go back to the first meeting you had with him. Yeah. What impression did he make on you? Pretty much uh, a straight arrow. Uh, do you have that word in English, a, a square? A, a somebody who's pretty straight. Very Boy Scoutish. I mean, he's really a straight shooter. He mm. believes in the Constitution. He's a second, third generation military family. Mm. He, he himself applied to fight in Iraq in 2004, and he was his body was frail, he was rejected, and he went to work for the CIA, and then he went to work for the uh, contractors of the NSA, mm -hmm. National Security Agents. So betwe between all these intelligence agencies, he, he got higher and higher in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in that circle, mm -hmm. and he was given more responsibility, and eventually became a major cyber operator out of Hawaii mm -hmm. against China and against Pakistan. And the way in which he sought to justify what he did, what impression did that case make upon you? Uh, I'm not sure I understand. I, I, the movie took the point of view, uh, no, we took no editorial position. We told his story yeah, yeah. from his eyes. So as he, you know, he's horrified as he finds out that these programs are, first of all, they're not done with democratic consent. They were deployed and developed by the United States. And it involves not just the United States, it involves the entire world. It's a form of data mining on, at the highest level. Which even John Kerry later admitted had gone too far. He did admit that? Well, it's, it's, it certainly did. I mean, it, they broke the law numerous times, but above all, it's, you know, I think, the, you know, Sir Snowden is certainly agrees that the United States has the right to protect itself and has the right to uh, what he calls target, what they call targeted surveillance, which is when you have a terrorist, you, t you target him, you, you get his associates, and you do good, det the usual good detective work can be done, and you can bring him in, and you can stop these things from happening. But when you say that we have to listen in on the entire world, mass surveillance, on the basis that we might pick up a terrorist here or there on a loose line saying something, that is really a stupid explanation. And, and people are pretty stupid if they believe that, because the truth is, it's not about uh, terrorism at that point. It's truly about data, amassing data and information on all countries and all its citizens. But by telling, as you say, by telling the story through his eyes, to what extent are you able, therefore, to develop some of these big themes it's hard. clearly yeah, in the it's film? Hard. It's hard. Well, you'll see, uh, you'll see uh, surveillance, you'll see cyber, cyber warfare, which is a whole new form of it, which we're suffering under now, which is, of course, cyberspace, which is a new form of it. And then there's, of course, drone warfare, because when you map the world, you, off, you, you have this ability to, uh, to uh, just about see anybody who you want, and you can target people. But cyber warfare is perhaps the most dangerous to us now. When we think about his predicament um, now and the kind of life that he leads, um, yeah. the fact that he was given permission to stay in Russia, but we know what might happen if he returned at any point to the States. Um, d are you able to convey in any sense uh, the way that he reflects on what he's done and whether he thinks it's been worthwhile, for example, or whether he has any regrets about it and that kind of thing? Well, we deal with that from his point of view, and uh, he tells us at the end of the movie, you know, I'm not going to give it away quite, no, no. but well, his reasons, and he tells us in the beginning, yeah. and he's clear that he did it for the public interest. He wants the, the people of the, of the United States to debate this. Now, I don't think they understood the material in 2013. So, as I said earlier, you know, I think the focus has shifted to him. Of course. And kill the messenger, you, you kill the message. Uh, but in that message, and I say, we don't want to wreck it, um, uh, in that message, does he 
offer some kind of answer to those, and there have been lots of them, who've used words like treason and traitor to describe him. Is there well, a riposte? Well, he doesn't do it for, I mean, he, any, I don't know any traitor or spy who's done it for free yeah. and given the information to the public and to, to three journalists and asked them to be responsible. Mm -hmm. So if, that's, if he is, that certainly is a great actor, and he fooled me. There's been such a big public debate about it, and um, you know, in recent weeks we've been focusing on the other great public debate in the U.S., which is around the the election as we approach uh, November the uh, yeah. the eighth. Um, what's your perspective on that? On the way that probably different from most people in Europe. Developed. Most people in Europe are terrified of Trump, and I hear the Trump narrative. All, I, I don't think he has a chance to win. I think what's going to happen is Clinton is is going to win, but uh, she's got a very uh, hard position on surveillance state, on, on, on war. She's mm -hmm. been, she, she's not, she hasn't met a war she didn't like, it seems. Mm -hmm. She also hasn't talked about climate control. She hasn't talked about things that matter, you know, to, it's been a very trivial election, although an interesting one in a reality TV mode where mm -hmm. two great, one great performer and the other one is hanging in for her life.